Let's talk about another point guard that maybe isn't being discussed a lot because everyone assumes he's going back to Utah, and that's, and that's Mike Conley. And I do think he's probably going to go back to Utah, as do you. But I don't know that a lot of people have, have really sat there and, and done the math. Are the Utah Jazz going to go $20 million into the tax to keep Mike Conley? It feels like something has to give and something meaningful, not like not like a salary dump of a guy they just don't need, like something meaningful potentially. Yeah, they've got some difficult choices to make with the Jazz. They certainly want to keep Mike Connolly. You know, they trade. They made that trade with the idea that they'd re-sign him, and I I know that he's been very happy there. I think he loves their their medical staff, and for where he is in his career, uh, that group has been really helpful to him. And this is a team that listen. Certainly, it was a disappointment how the season ended, but they had the best record uh, in the Western Conference last year, the best record in the league. And Mike Conley was hurt. In and Mike the, Conley was and hurt. And Donovan Mitchell was playing hurt. Yeah, and I still think this is a team with a core that believes we can run this thing back, uh, let's get out of the pandemic year, and we could be uh, a, a team that can make a case that we can get to the finals. So I think for Mike Conley, I, I think there's a lot of mutual interest between he and the organization but you, like you said, you do the math on that roster, and I think the Jazz are going to have some tough decisions to make. I don't think they can just bring back everybody and sign Mike Connolly. Uh, a couple of draft rapid-fire ones to wrap up. Uh, we've talked about the 10th pick. The pick before it at 9 is Sacramento, and as you've already reported, there's been a lot of noise around number 9. What exactly is the noise? Is this a win-now thing, like another team that feels like they, they have enough young guys, let's get a veteran in here? Yeah, I think... I think Sacramento right now, you know, they're looking at Buddy Heald. They've talked to some teams about Heald in both the West and the East. Marvin Bagley Jr., who, remember, was the second overall pick in the draft that gave you Luka Doncic and DeAndre Ayton <sighs> and uh, Trey Young. And Vlade took him at number two. I think there's I think there's probably a new home for him on the horizon. I think there's interest in him. So, But this is also a Kings team that would like – they want to end this playoff drought. I think it's the longest in the league now, right, without a playoff appearance. And they want to end that. Uh, there's a lot of interest in Harrison Barnes. But, listen, this is a player who he's played really well for them. And he's at a, uh, you know, he's, he's on a significant contract. I, I would be surprised if Barnes left. But I think you look at Buddy Heald, you look at Marvin Bagley, and, you know, maybe some deals around that ninth pick in the draft and like you talk to teams who want to get in the top 10, they tell you the entry points are nine and 10. And that very often comes down to draft night when all of a sudden, you know, Jonathan Kaminga drops or uh, Davion Mitchell drops. So I'm just you throwing sure. those two out as examples and you see a player, you say, okay, we have a deal contingent on the guy we want getting to you. And then all of a sudden, you, that's where you get some action, on maybe on draft night. The other, we, we, we can't let this end, this pandemic season, which is still going, end without talking about the Tampa-Toronto Raptors, a team that had to play in a different country uh, and all that. They are another team I'm looking at. Maybe the most likely scenario is they just stay at four, make their pick, and move on. But there's a lot of action around that pick in both directions. You know, what, what could they get trading back? People trying to get in and get number four. Um, they have a very interesting offseason with their their greatest all-time franchise player, probably Kyle Lowry, entering free agency. But still with Siakam and Anobi Van Vliet, not a team that's built to just tank and rebuild. They're in an interesting spot, and that pick is an interesting pivot point for them. What do we think happens there? Well, they kind of did their tanking last Tampa season. Tank, the Tampa Tank. Hashtag and, Tampa and Tank. It, and it worked. It's a, I think the feeling is it is a four-impact player draft. They've got the fourth pick. So history tells you, if 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 everybody feels strongly about it being a four player draft or a three player draft, you don't trade out of one of those spots. Maybe you go up. That doesn't mean they won't. But I think for them, barring an all star level veteran that they think they could bring in, uh, you know, so I think uh, uh, Jalen Suggs is probably the pick there. That's the feeling right now at four, and that you could play him with Van Vliet. Uh, we we I think we expect Kyle Lowry will be somewhere else. Uh, but, right, this is a Toronto team, unlike, I think, the other three teams in the lottery who are just in complete rebuilds. This is a team, but I think if you do bring Suggs in, he played with other great players at Gonzaga. He is mature. He is a winning player. He's got a great, I think, Masai Ujiri and Nick Nurse. This, this is a, Suggs is a football player. He's a tough kid. He's a tough-minded player. He fits right into that uh, Raptors uh, culture and he's an outstanding 
player. I, I'd be surprised if they pass on him there. But again, unlike the other three, this is a team that not just wants to be back in the playoffs, wants to see, hey, can we get a, a, a home court advantage in the playoffs? Can we get Pascal Siakam back to what he was? He just he wasn't right last season. And I think the you know, part of the pandemic and the offseason and uh, the previous offseason, I think, impacted that. Uh, but you're right. They're in a lot of conversations up and down. And I still think they want to probably have a conversation this week about can we get up a little higher? Certainly Evan Mobley fits uh, the mold of a player who you could slide right in there. And listen, Mobley has a chance to be a dominant two-way player in the NBA. It's going to be a, a sprint, a fun sprint, but a sprint over the next 10 days. We're just going to see a lot of action. You're going to be able to help us break it all down. That's it for the Woj Low YouTube extravaganza. We'll be talking and writing and tweeting all week, all the next 10 days. I hope you guys all enjoy the madness of the NBA offseason. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.